Welcome back guys. In this whole new video, we're going to take a look at chemical composition. So, we're going to say the mass per mole of an element is also known as its atomic mass. Remember, that's just the mass of all the protons and neutrons found within an element. The reason we don't care about the number of electrons is because electrons weigh a lot less than protons and neutrons. Now, when it comes to the mass per mole of a compound though, a compound is made up of more than one element combined. They could be the same element or they could be different elements combined together. We're going to say here we no longer call it atomic mass, but instead we're going to call it molar or molecular mass. Now, whichever case you decide to look at, whether it be the atomic mass of an element or the molar mass of a compound, both have the same exact units. The units will be grams per mole. Now, you'll be expected to know what the atomic mass of an element is or to know what the atomic mass of a compound is. So for the first type, we're going to look at how do we figure out the atomic mass of an element. Remember, this one's probably, probably the easiest. To find the atomic mass of an element, just remember we looked on the periodic table to find them. So, what is the total mass of each of the following elements? Remember, sodium is Na. We look on the periodic table. Remember, Na is in group 1A. So it's right here. And it's a, so its atomic mass is 22.99 grams per mole. So for every one mole of sodium, there is 22.99 grams of sodium. Gold, remember, is Au. We just looked that up on the periodic table. And it's going to be 197.0 grams per mole. So again, for every one mole of gold, there is 197 grams of gold. Finally, we have mercury, which is Hg. And here, that would be 200.6 grams per mole. Now, when it comes to figuring out the molar or molecular mass of an entire compound, we have to look up each individual element's atomic mass, then add them all up to get the total mass of the compound. So, for the first one, we have to find the total mass of dinitrogen pentoxide. At this point, we should all be familiar with naming. So, in dinitrogen pentoxide, we have two nitrogens and five oxygens. Each one, each nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. And for oxygen, it's 16 grams per mole. Okay. So this is going to give us 28.02 grams per mole. And this right here will give us 80 grams per mole. So the combined weight altogether would be 108.02 grams per mole. For the next one, we have C12H22O11. We have 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. This would be 12.01, 1.01, and 16.0. Remember, each of these numbers we're getting from the periodic table. So this would give us 14 point, wait, 144.12. This would give us 22.22. .22. And this one will give us 176.0. When you add all of this together, it gives us 342.34 grams per mole. Now, finally, the last one. The last one, we have NH4 inside of brackets, and there's a 3 out here. That 3 gets distributed to everything inside of the brackets. So it gets distributed to the nitrogen, and it gets distributed to the hydrogen. So we have three nitrogens here, and then four times three gives us 12 hydrogens. Now, that three only gets distributed to what's inside the brackets. It doesn't get distributed to the PO4 portion. So here we only have one phosphorus and four oxygens. Then we use, up, we use the atomic masses of each individual element. Okay, so that gives us 42.03, that gives us 12.12, 30.97, and this last one here, which is 64. 
All we do now is we add up that number, add up all those totals to find the total mass of our complete structure. So this would be 149.12 grams per mole. Okay. So it's important that you guys understand what is meant by atomic mass versus molar or molecular mass. Atomic mass just refers to an individual element's weight, whereas molar or molecular mass means the total mass of a compound or molecule. As long as you can do this, this will help build up off of ideas such as mass conversions, where we go from moles to grams to molecules or atoms. So this part right here is essential to do those later, more complicated calculations.